Welcome to KL Dixon Ministries International. Knowing Christ in depth and making him known at all costs. KLDMI is a non-profit ministry organization raising and impacting Christian leaders for community transformation through leadership trainings, believers conferences, and gospel crusades. Join our faith in action today for youth development through academic scholarships and grooming with our King of Kings College. Child development, which we do in partnership with Compassion International. Community transformation through radio programming with daily Gospel of the Kingdom broadcasts. Community outreach to the abject poor and disaster response. And the ongoing construction of a 10,000 seater multipurpose ministry complex. Partner with us today by following the contacts on your screen. Uh, I bring lovely greetings to all our listeners uh, in Africa, in Uganda, in Fort Porto, and all over the world. You people that are in UK, we love you so much. Our friends in America, our friends all over the world, uh, we bless you in the great and mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The God that has seen you through the past will see you through this, and uh, you, will, you are remaining to magnify and glorify and serve the Lord. Lord, we thank you today for you, the God of our mercy. God of our faithfulness, and in everything, Lord, we more than conquerors. Today we are coming with a theme, therefore, in this manner, pray. We're introducing this sermon from the book of Matthew chapter 6, and uh, we will go with verse, uh, uh, it's going to be verse 6 uh, through, verse 5 through 9. Verse 5 through 9, uh, here it goes. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. I think you guys, if you have a Bible, mark that hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by, by men. I should last say to you, they have their reward in verse 6. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the sacred place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. In verse 7. And when you pray, do not use vain reputation as the heathen do. Uh, uh, the word heathen means as the non-believers do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. In verse 8. Therefore do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In verse 9. In this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, how be your name. May the Lord God bless you as we go through all of this and we come to understand what does all of this mean. Let us get back to verse, um, uh, verse 5. Let's get to, back to chapter 6 and verse 5. He says, When you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the street that they may be seen by men. I should last say to you, they have their reward. Now, I just want you to understand the difference between a private prayer and a sacred prayer. A private prayer is when we are seeking God. And Jesus right over here speaks about the private prayer. The seeker's prayer. When you are seeking God, you need to go back somewhere and close the door and be there by yourself or by anybody that you are seeking God with. Uh, you listen, you are seeking God. And in fact, it is out of seeking God that now you have something to present on the street. Now, where it goes a little bit wrong uh, is when we go to the street and we begin to seek God on the street, we begin to pray a seeker's prayer uh, at the road and uh, highway cornerstone somewhere. And, uh, you know, listen to this. There's a time when the, you go to the place where they're manufacturing guns. That place you can take as much time as possible because it's a manufacturing area. But now the soldier is not a manufacturer of a gun. He's a shooter. He's a user of a gun. Now, when you go to the street, you don't need to seek, you need to shoot. Your prayers are powerful. That's why when Jesus was seen in the public, uh, 
the, the longest prayer that he has ever prayed in the public was about two or three times. One was at the tomb of Lazarus. He said, Lazarus, come out. And his first prayer said, Lord, do this, that they may know that you sent me. Then uh, another time is when he was feeding the 5,000 men. And maybe a few more times. But his prayers publicly are demonstration of power. Now, when you, you, you are in the ministry, don't make a show off speaking a, long of, a lot of repetitive, meaningless words. Lay hands upon the sick and they're healed. Don't say so many things because so many things becomes very, very, very meaningless. So Jesus is not against people praying publicly, but there's a prayer for the public and there's a prayer to seek God. I can tarry in the presence of the Lord for even a year, even a month, even a day, even four or five hours, but cannot, cannot tarry on the crusade for a whole day. Because even at resurrection of Lazarus, it was just a spoken word and Lazarus resurrected. I have a saying, this is me. If I command you to resurrect and you're dead and you don't resurrect, then I ask people to prepare for funeral. Because you just refuse to resurrect. But I cannot go into an intercession interceding for your resurrection. Because if my first word cannot resurrect you, then I shouldn't even go on any further. Because you will not resurrect. I need to go back and seek God so that I may find power to be able to resurrect the dead. I have seen many people resurrecting. I think it is on record and we still have those people that resurrected here with us. They have not died again. And uh, I know whenever we resurrected them, what we said, we say, arise. And they arose and they were resurrected. But there are some circumstances where we really feel this person must resurrect. And at times we used to make some mistakes. And you say he will. Let me tell you something. If he does not resurrect by the first prayer, you don't need to, res to, uh, to command him to resurrect again. And you're not going to intercede. You say, arise. If he's not arising, prepare for the burial. Because he has just refused. So what I'm trying to say you today, what I'm trying to teach about here today, Jesus does not criticize public prayer. Uh, Jesus does not criticize public prayer, but condemns pretentious ostentatious prayer when I say he condemns pretense you're trying to pray much louder on the crusade with repetitive words that's pretentious huh? Jesus does not criticize public prayer but condemns pretentious ostentatious prayer let's go on that attracts public attention without any meaning in the sight of God you understand what I'm talking about let's go on and see something more here uh, uh, vine and repetition re, uh, uh, refer to empty babbling and long prayers that infuse meaningless verbosity, meaning false worship. Now, what I'm trying to teach you here, it's not your multitude of words, are you with me, that makes God really answer your prayers. It's not your action. You don't need to pray like me. Pray like yourself. <laughs> you don't need to pray publicly. It's like you know, going on the TV and put the overnight on the TV. That overnight turns to become a service, not as such. Because we come to the overnight to seek God. But when it becomes public, then it's no longer seeking. It's now a ministry. And in the ministry, we have to demonstrate what we found into the, public, into the private place. You understand what I'm talking about? So there's a difference between seeking God. In fact, a service, actually another word for a service is public. And another word for public is already rewarded. But now, when, when you're doing this, uh, uh, actually the results are already given to you. It's like a going on and start giving alms. You find people that uh, do not have dinner and you give them dinner. And then you put yourself on all the media houses. You give out food. The Bible says you have already been rewarded because people are sympathetic of you because you've done that that's why whenever you're giving things these newspaper men sneak in at times but we don't invite them because we know if we do it privately we are more blessed than when doing it publicly but however at times there are some problems see people that may have donated through you they want to see you giving them out listen to this that one is there and we also know how to handle it. At times, we take photos and pictures and we let them know what we did. Now, another thing is seeking, which is private. Seeking, which is private. Immediately, you get a later reward. 
when you are seeking God. And this reward, what is amazing, it is seen publicly. <laughs> it is seen what? Publicly. That's why I want to let you know, don't try to do things to make people get surprised of who you are, whatever you are. No, that's not going to help you. That's not going to help you. Jesus teaches uh, uh, focused prayers which acknowledges God is needed reign in every facet of life and society. So when you go to prayer, uh, just speak your heart to God. Know that you're meeting the need. A word or two or three, which are meaning, okay, but remember, listen to this. Some people may need to tarry in the presence of God. Do you know, it, it is too bad to stand somewhere on the public and pray for three hours. However, when you go into your private room, you can worship God even for 10 hours. You can praise God even for 20 hours. Because, you, you, you know, one of the things that agitates is somebody that comes to your house and he spends three hours begging from you. However, you feel nourished if somebody comes to your house and talks to you about the good things he knows about you. It becomes refreshing. Now, God at times is sick and tired of beggars. He wants people that come and worship him, bless him and call him what he is. Because, because many times God knows what you are in need of even before you ask. That's the God that we are worshiping. I want to conclude again as I conclude this sermon in uh, 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 Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 through 13. This is what he says. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debtors as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I declare be blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is the first series. We are coming up with another series which says, in this manner, we pray. Uh, 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 number two. And God bless you.